Hey guys, uh, we're gonna move into chapter six, which deals with random variables. Um, chapter six is a long chapter, so there's a lot in this chapter. The notes are pretty long. Uh, so let's get going in this. So section 6.1, first of all, a random variable takes on numerical values that describe the outcome of some chance process. We've heard this term of a probability distribution before, okay, in our last chapter, and we're gonna see that again in this chapter as well. What is a random variable? So a random variable, like, like we said, takes on numerical values and it's describing some type of chance process. So for example, when you flip a coin and you record the number of tails that you get, that's an example of a random variable. Or you roll a die and you record the number of sixes that you get, okay? Those are all examples of random variables. When we're describing that probability distribution, a probability distribution similar to what we saw in the last possible or sorry, in the last chapter, describes the possible outcomes with the corresponding probabilities and how likely they are. So for example, in this chapter, what you're gonna be seeing is something like a set number of trials. Like we flip a coin 10 times and that probability distribution is gonna say, okay, what's the probability of getting zero heads out of the 10 or one head or two heads or three heads or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10, okay? The, the probability of each of those individual outcomes out of that set number of trials. There are two main types of random variables. We've got discrete random variables and continuous. And again, you'll notice a lot of times in the course, things start to kind of reappear again. And we saw discrete and continuous earlier in the uh, course. So if we can find a way to list all the possible outcomes and assign probabilities, we have a discrete random variable. You wanna think of discrete as something that's countable, okay? We know the exact values. So again, a discrete random variable has a fixed set of values. So something like the number of children in a family, the attendance at a football game, the number of detective light bulbs in a box. You wanna think of discrete random variables as things that are a count. So again, keep that in the back of your mind. Discrete random variables are a count. We'll go through the next example in class. Again, you can see we're talking about the number of languages that students can speak. The number of languages that students can speak is a count, how many can you speak? Hence, it's a discrete random variable. We'll take a look at that whole example in class, as well as the next example that follows on roulette, and the next example that follows on um, AP scores. Now, when we are finding the mean or the expected value of a discrete random variable, we use this formula right here, which is on your formula sheet. So when you see the words mean, mean and expected value are interchangeable. They're synonymous here. And you might see it written as the capital letter E and then in parentheses X, or our Greek notation of mu sub X. And here's our formula. So we know sigma in math means sum, and it means you're going to sum up all of the X values times the probabilities. So for example, if I wanna find the mean of a random variable, a discrete random variable, I would take each individual X value times the corresponding probability and sum them. So I would take this X value times the probability plus the next X value times the probability plus the next X value times the probability and so on and so forth, okay? Now to find the standard deviation, you have this formula. Okay, now remember, standard deviation is the square root of variance. So we have to find the variance first. Well, how do I find the variance? I take each individual X value minus the expected value or the mean, square it, and then multiply it times the probability. This is kind of an annoying formula here, which just steps are shown right here. But we can also use the, the calculator to find that. So again, breaking this down step by step, to find the variance or the standard deviation, you're gonna subtract each individual observed value and the mean. Then you're gonna square each difference, which you'll notice this is the same way how you find standard deviation by hand. This part's different, multiply each of those times its associated probability, sum them all up, which will get you the variance. And if you need to find the standard deviation, take the square root of that. We should be reminded that standard deviation is the average or the typical distance the outcomes are from the mean, okay? So keep that in mind that that same definition of standard deviation holds true when we're talking about the standard deviation of a discrete random variable. So say we're given this example right here, 
we can use the calculator to find that standard deviation. So instead of using this ugly formula and these steps in here, which you should know how to do, we can use the calculator to both find the standard deviation and to find the mean. Now, just to reiterate, if we were to find the mean or the expected value for this, this problem here, I would take one times 0 0.630 plus two times 0.295 plus three times 0 0.065 plus four times 0 0.008 plus five times 0 0.002. That would get me the mean or the expected value. Now I can get all this information by using the calculator as well. So on the calculator, I would enter my values, in this case, my languages values into L1 in my calculator under stat edit. Then into L2, we're gonna put the corresponding probabilities of 0 0.630, 0 0.295, 0 0.065, and 0 0.008, and 0 0.002. Then we're gonna to go to stat, calc, and one var stats, like we would normally go to find the mean and the standard deviation. But the important thing here, and make sure that you write this down is, you'll notice there's that second thing under list, which will say L1, that says frequency list. And in these particular problems, you have to change the frequency list because that represents the probabilities. And as long as you put your probabilities in L2, you'll go ahead and you'll put change the frequency list to L2 by pressing second and number two. Then hit enter, X bar will get you the mean or the expected value, and then sigma X will get you your standard deviation, which is 0.671. If we're asked to interpret that standard deviation, that just means that the number of languages spoken by a randomly selected US student typically, or on average, varies by about 0.67 languages from the mean. Okay, so keep in mind, it's that same definition of standard deviation that we've seen in the past. The issue with using the calculator to find both the expected value and the mean is there's no partial credit allowed, okay? So my suggestion is for expected value or mean, you absolutely should show the work, okay, all the time. For standard deviation, just show the first few terms of what you're doing in your calculation from this formula that's up above. That's all discrete random variables, but we also have continuous random variables. So discrete random variables arrive from situations that involve counting. Situations that involve a measure or measuring are typically referred to as continuous random variables. And we've seen this in the, in the past. Continuous random variables are often described by a density curve. So now we're going back to something that we've seen in the past again with area under the curve. And most frequently what we're gonna see is using that normal curve. So once again, a continuous random variable measures something. Not whole numbers can take on any value while a discrete random variable has clear gaps and we want to think of it as a count. So here's some examples to kind of help you out. Foot length would be a continuous random variable, while shoe size would be discrete. When we're talking about the foot length that somebody has, we can measure that to an exact value, while shoe size only goes up by halves. Your exact age would be something that is continuous. Okay, I'm 21 years, three days, four hours, whatever it might be while the number of birthdays that you had would be discrete. Your time in a hurdle race would be continuous, while the number of hurdles that you've jumped would be discrete, okay? So make sure that you're aware of that difference between continuous and discrete random variables. When we think about how many possible foot lengths there are, there's an infinite amount of foot lengths. So how can we describe the distribution of foot length? A histogram wouldn't work, so we use a density curve, all right? So we're going back to that idea that density curves are used for continuous random variables. How do I find the probability for a continuous random variable? Well, it's the area under the curve, and most frequently, it'll be a normal curve, okay? By hand, we could find the z-score using our z-score formula or of our value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and then using the standard normal table. On the calculator, when it's something that's normally distributed, we could go ahead and use our normal CDF calculation. Okay, so we're gonna go back into a lot of these things that you've seen in the past. When we're dealing with a, a continuous random variable, there is no difference between the probability that X is less than A as compared to X is less than or equal to A because that boundary point when we're dealing with a continuous random variable only adds no area. So only, and this is only for continuous random variables, not for discrete, the probability that X is less than or equal to A is equal to the probability that X is less than A because that boundary line really creates no additional area to the area under the curve. 
There's lots of examples that we'll go through in class, but I wanted to make sure that you have all these notes down, at least the foundation of it, and you have an idea of what we're gonna be talking about, but be ready for a lot of calculations when I see you in class. See you guys.